now one of the things that people ask that the modern understanding and the vedic understanding of ecl eclipses so are eclipses caused by rahu and it seems like a, a childhood fairy tale that some some monster comes and eats the sun or eats the moon and then what happens does he excrete the sun or the moon or what how does it come out so people make fun of this uh, but actually if you look at the vedic explanation it's much more sophisticated so let's try to understand this so so this is the current scientific understanding of how eclipses happen so we have the sun the moon uh, and the earth so when the moon comes in between the sun and the earth then the part of the moon where the moon's shadow will fall that will not see the sun <clears throat> and that is called a solar eclipse and now because two images are brought together over here the moon cannot be at both places at the same time but if the moon is on the other side hmm, uh, so when the lunar eclipse will happen is <clears throat> that the moon we will not be able to see because the moon basically gets the reflection reflects the light from the sun and if the earth is blocking the moon then the sun's light doesn't reach the moon and that's why the moon we can't see it so that is how eclipses happen and that's the modern understanding and at least from a functional perspective it's accurate we are able to predict eclipses with a substantial level of accuracy accuracy using this model so now what is the vedic understanding so this becomes a little more subtle and so sophisticated mm. okay so you will see the sun is in the middle and you see one big circle around it that is the path of the moon sorry of the earth going around the sun that's the big circle but now if you see on the right side or where let's look at the right right side you see the moon and the there is a circle going around the moon so now the significant point is that the moon's rotation uh, uh, is not the moon's motion is not in the same plane as the sun's motion so yeah so if the uh, the sun's plane is like this sun's motion is in this plane the moon's motion is in this plane so there's an angle i just uh, mentioned over there so now what happens because of this is that only when not only the three objects have to be in the same line but the the everything also has to be in the same plane so eclipses will happen only when all of them are in the same plane and you will see these two happen they are called as a nodes you see in the in the top and below you will see the two nodes hmm? so only when uh, the objects are at the at that particular location and uh, when so when the earth is in a nodal point and then the moon comes in between the earth and the sun then an eclipse will occur hmm. now uh, to take this forward that nodal plane or nodal point is significant because of particular reason so now the surya siddhanta describes the location of rahu and ketu so rahu and ketu they are they are non light reflecting planets so they are not visible to us hmm? just like we discussed so much in the universe is not visible so rahu and ketu is also not visible but precisely their location is at the nodes so the, the place where the moon's plane and the earth's plane intersect that is the place where rahu and ketu are there so in that sense both rahu and the alignment of the sun moon and earth both happen at the same time so the alignment of sun moon and earth is that that cosmic explanation is not denied but when that happens rahu and ketu also happen to be there at that time so now so that's why both explanations can work in parallel yeah <laughs> okay i'll just explain this further then we'll have question about it so so what happens is that the explanations here are not contradictory they are complementary complementary means both explanations can work at the same time and now somebody might say that actually then rahu and ketu are not needed only anyway the sun and moon and the earth they can come in one line then automatically it will happen yes from a physical perspective yes there is the three coming together will cause the physical event the eclipse but from a shastric perspective eclipse is not just a physical event that physical event is associated with certain cosmic effects or certain malefic effects certain inauspicious effects 
and those effects are caused by Rahu and Ketu. So when it is said that okay, during eclipses we should fast or we should do some sacred activities, we should avoid certain activities. That is not simply because in the past people were so superstitious. Oh, suddenly it has become dark. Suddenly we can't see the sun. So we can't see the moon. Oh, that's why we should pray now. It is not just that. There is Rahu and K because Rahu and Ketu are having an influence at that time. So that creates an inauspicious effect. So the eclipses are not just a physical phenomena. The physical cause, cause of eclipse can be explained in terms of the sun, moon and earth being in one line. But the inauspiciousness associated with the eclipses is caused by Rahu and Ketu. And uh, in the now because Rahu and Ketu are strong negative influences, that's why their location needs to be known. And as far as the Sura Siddhanta or other Siddhanta Jyoti Shastras are there, there is no other way described to know their location apart from their position at the nodes. So in that sense, the eclipses, uh, eclipses are the way to know when Rahu and Ketu uh, influence, when Rahu and Ketu are going to have an influence. So the location is known through the method of the eclipse. Now the Bhagavatam's language is a little more careful. Sometimes whenever any story is there in Sanskrit, when it's translated into English, there are different ways it could be translated. And often the translator's agenda or bias comes into the picture. So the Bhagavatam, if we look at the Sanskrit, it doesn't say it, it devours, it says it covers. So covering and devouring are two different things. And devouring can also be used in a metaphorical sense. In the Bhagavad Gita says, Mahashano Mahapapma. Ma, so lust is all devouring, Prabhupada translates. Now what does it devour? You know, even a lusty person is still existing. It is not that they, they, it's not like a crocodile or alligator that has devoured something. So that devouring can also refer in a non-literal non sense to that lust devours the intelligence of a person. That means the intelligence stops functioning. So Rahu and Ketu, they devour the sun and the moon. That means their influence in terms of their luminosity stops manifesting. So it's not talking about a physical devouring. It is talking about, even when the word devouring is used, it is more in the metaphorical sense to refer to their influence being eclipsed, being overcome. They no longer manifest at that time. 